Welcome to Red Eye. Hello, everyone. I'm Tom Shalou. Let's check in with TV's Andy Levy over in the Red Eye News Deck. Andy? Congratulations, Tom. Thanks. But for what? Well, for your New York Mets clinching the National League East Championship. Uh, Andy, I'm not really a Mets fan. I'm more of a Yes, Red kudos to you for hanging tough with a team that's disappointed so, so many times before, Tom. Andy, again, I am not. And credit to you for faithfully tweeting the hashtag Year of the Mets since way back in April, despite mockery from many of your followers. Andy, I got to tell oh, you. Oh, no, wait. That was me. Oh, that was me, not you. Ah, let's go Mets and go to hell, Tom Shalhoub. Let's welcome our guests. She met her husband in a bar. You have no idea how much hope that gives to our alcoholic viewers. I'm here tonight with Fox Business Network anchor Lori Rothman. He has a podcast on the Anthony Cumia Network and a barber in the Wild West. From the Gavin McInnes Show on the Anthony Cumia Podcast Network, it's <laughs> Gavin McInnes. She shares a last name with one of the most influential men in American history, Jamie Kennedy. Host of Kennedy on the Fox Business Network, Kennedy. And of all the guys who look like they killed Joe Pesci in a movie, <laughs> he's the funniest. Sitting right next to me is comedian Mike, Michael, what was it, Michael? Michael Vecchione. Okay, let's start the show. An art exhibit is forced to remove an anti-ISIS diorama. The terrorists win again. The Passion for Freedom art exhibit outside of London was set to showcase a series of tableaus satirizing the terrorist group with Sylvanian dolls. But no longer. Organizers removed the inflammatory pieces. This one's called ISIS Invading a Picnic after police said it would require an extra $55,000 to secure the event. But all is not lost. We here at Red Eye are brave enough to show you the works of the London-based artist who goes by the name Mimsy. Here's ISIS interrupting your favorite television show. And here's ISIS invading a gay pride parade. Mm. Mimsy told a British website earlier this year that the childish quality of the images, quote, perfectly summarizes the mentality of religious fundamentalists. They are blowing themselves up and murdering for a cause that is so flat, thin, and childish, it may as well be depicted as if it were a toy set in an Argos catalog. Hmm. I'm not familiar with that catalog. That must be a Great Britain toy catalog. Is that right, uh, Kennedy? I was reading that going, I should probably know what that is. That's probably one of those smart British references that people toss around who read The New Yorker. Yeah, I did a quick lo look. It, it, it appears to be kind of a, like, a, like a Sears catalog. In, oh, very in good. Place. Yes. Yeah. No, I, I was very moved by uh, Mimsy's artistry, and I thought that uh, the contrasts uh, evoked an emotional reaction, and I, I peed my pants with laughter. <laughs> It was not only funny, but look, uh, uh, let me see, uh, Gavin. Mimsy said that she was inspired by the obvious fear of terrorism in the West and the neoliberal denial of any actual threat. Doesn't that prove that the piece, you know, it proves her point, doesn't it? Yeah, she's right. She, she proved her point. And this happened when Pamela Geller did this. Our first instinct was, why did you make those guys so mad? But the proper response is, if something is verboten in Western society, we have to do it. And I, I think these liberals think that kowtowing to ISIS is going to satiate them. That's the, the gasoline for their engine. The more you kowtow, the more you, you, you uh, subjugate yourself, mm. the more empowered they are. This has been a win for ISIS. Pamela Geller was a win for us. And, it, and you're, not, you're not getting friend points with ISIS. Yeah. The people who <laughs> remove the exhibit, it's not like ISIS is going, okay, those are our bros. When we go attack... Great Britain, specifically London, let's make sure to leave those people yeah, off right. the list who took that down, because those are our friends. That is true. Uh, now, Mike, yes. uh, 55,000, how many security guards do you think that was going to get them? I don't know. It was going to be. I don't know how they got the dolls through airport security. That's really my question. Like, how did they do it? Yeah, they probably separated the <laughs> outfits from the dolls, right? <laughs> that, that had to be it. I don't know. Um, but they were made of C4. Well, the, the thing is, Lori, uh, it obviously seems like it's, it's kind of fun. They're kind of, you know, it's you, interesting. Fun? Like, they were yes. cheesy and corny. I kind of wanted to blow them up myself. I mean, I would never admit that. <laughs> but late, did, but. did they get you angry looking at these scenes? It, it's... No, it was, it was so silly. They didn't at all. In fact, I thought it was... A, what, what irritated me more than anything is they don't blink about supplying security guards to sporting events or political events, but art exhibitions... You know, no, no dice. You're not going to go there. That is what? a lot of money, though. It is a lot. Fifty-five thousand. Well, imagine if that's a lie. 
You don't believe it. No, you don't need $55,000 to provide security. You need $4,000. <laughs> right. hey, so wait a minute. Like we what do you think is the security? You, this happens all the time. I, I've had controversial speakers uh, trying to get them into colleges, and the college doesn't want to say we're too scared, so they just keep upping the security fee. Mm -hmm. It's all BS. Yeah, well, maybe. Um, I mean, what if it... Maybe it was going to be, you know, just fifty-five thousand, and they just send an extra guy out there, and then yeah, they hire a retired cop. They cost five hundred bucks. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there are plenty of retired people you can hire. Hire a retired <coughs> meth head. You put like an Arnold Schwarzenegger type on the scene, <laughs> so that you know he'll take care of it. Here's or the just thing charge that, higher dollar value for the ticket. And people are so determined to see, you know, a show that's not, you know, that is what it is, then let them pay a little more to see it. I mean, sure, they'll pay a little more. I, I yeah. saw this video today where ISIS was saying, it was one of these British jihadis who was saying, we will not rest. They, they sort of have a fake foreign accent, even mm -hmm. though they're British. And they're, <laughs> we will not rest until the, ice, the black flag flies above 10 Downing Street, until the black flag flies above the White House. And you're going... Oh, and then it's going to be cool? <laughs> I've yeah, seen what you guys do. You exactly. yell at chicks and burkas for having purple socks. You're insatiable. <laughs> oh, they wouldn't relax at that point, would no. they? No. They wouldn't just sit and have a cappuccino with you. Okay, Hillary Clinton appeared on Meet the Press on Sunday and deftly put to rest the email controversy. Also, she deftly put to rest the email controversy. Take a look. There's only so much that I can control, um, but what I have tried to do in explaining this is to provide more transparency and more information than anybody that I'm aware of who's ever served in the government, and I'm happy to do that because I want these questions to be answered. Clinton's staffers and supporters approved of her performance on Twitter. Karen Finney, Clinton's senior spokeswoman, wrote, Questions on Hillary Clinton's emails on this morning's MTP asked and answered. Time to move on. Brad Woodhouse, head of a pro-Clinton super PAC, added, questions on Hillary Clinton's emails <laughs> on this morning's MTP asked and answered. Time to move on. Former governor, uh, Michigan Governor Jennifer Granholm observed, cannot wait to see Hillary Clinton on Meet the Press. This AM sounds like she answered every email question ever. Now time to move on. Longtime Clinton supporter Hillary Rosen noted, questions on Hillary Clinton's emails yesterday. MTP ans asked and answered. Time to move on, please. Yes, please. And Buffy Wicks, head of another pro-Clinton super PAC, tweeted, Hillary Clinton responds to questions about emails on MTP. Good answers. Time to move on to substance, please. Gavin, I have one question. Is it time to move on? No, let's dig in. <laughs> it's, it's like she wants us to, to go, what, at now, at now at this point, what difference does it make? It makes a lot of difference because we're getting all the juice now. Didn't we just learn that she started the birther movement? Didn't that just come out through yes. the emails? Yes, that was uh, that was the Clinton campaign when she was running against Barack Obama in the primary before. I cannot ago, thank. I, I don't. I'm not a big Obama fan, but the fact that he released her hard drives to the public in an attempt to mess her with her campaign and get Biden in is the best thing he's ever done. So you think that's that's your theory? <laughs> that's a given at yeah. this point. He oh. hates her because she has sabotaged him in the past, so he doesn't want her messing with his legacy, and he's getting out there and giving us the gossip, and I can't wait to see the Benghazi gossip. Well, I think released her hard drive. Or the Ben Gossip, as it's known. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Yes, I, I think so, too. Mike, uh, I think that's filthy. Release her hard drives. Yeah, it I does like sound it. dirty. But do you think uh, this was coordinated, Mike? It could be like on Twitter when 21 comedians come up with the exact same yeah. joke with the same hashtag. No, I think there's and they an, all tweeted at the same I time. I think there's an app now that if you're thinking the same thing, it just brings all of the thoughts together <laughs> into one tweet. Yes. I yeah. just think this is their mantra. All the way back to the Bill Clinton era. Move on, move it along, nothing yeah. to see here, no scandals, nothing, we haven't done yeah, anything I, wrong. I wonder how that'll work with the FBI, though. I, I, I wonder if those talking points, if they could just forward those to FBI investigators and uh, they could say, asked and answered, time to move on. And really, I don't think that we've heard appropriate answers to the questions we really need to hear, which is, you know, why did you have a, a server, a private server in the first place? What were you shielding yourself from? Why didn't you have some sort of an independent outside source going through those emails? with you just to make sure there was no conflict of interest because that is the opposite of transparency. That's opacity. Well, yes. and, then, and she also makes the unverifiable claim that she's the most transparent person who's ever held a government job. Yeah, I How guess can you, you possibly verify something like you that? You cannot verify that. But the thing is, should we be doing these? I don't know, Kennedy, if the... Uh, what do you call the, the hearings? If these hearings were because they drag on forever and they never seem to get anywhere, 
you know, they're not going to get a conviction out of it or a guilty well, verdict. Well, no, but that's you know? why the FBI is investigating. I mean, you have five separate agencies who are going over these emails uh, as is, and the FBI is in the middle of a criminal investigation, whether or not her, she or her people want to admit that. And that's separate from what Trey Gowdy and the the special the select yeah. committee is doing on Capitol Hill. Those are two completely separate things. And, you know, Chuck Grassley and, and Trey Gowdy, they've, they've talked about offering uh, her IT guy immunity so he can go in and, and they're going to have like, what is it called, a procurement session where yeah. they sit down and just whip them with tiny pieces of bamboo. I think it, it's just that I feel like when you get into the details, people start to lose it. Instead of just letting the reporters go at her, now like they can, you know, say that all oh, the... It's just a witch hunt, and I feel like it's just if you let the reporters ask her questions, she's never going to be able to answer them, right? Of course, and it also is an indication that someone is losing. Like, the Columbia just tried to do this with Mattress Girl. They said, let's just throw out the whole case, because it wasn't based on your gender. It was based on the circumstances, and they had some dumb little nuance. Mattress Girl, case. a woman who Emma wore Salkowitz, a mattress. Yes, yes, who used her who used her rape mattress as a performance art piece that she got credit for. So the innocent uh, accused is suing the school. And they go, they basically just said, "Let's. it's time to move on. What that How means is you're for guilty. That, that entity, whether it's Hillary Clinton or Columbia University, of course she wants everyone to move on because no one is paying attention right. to anything she's saying, whether it's the Keystone XL pipeline or, you know, Donald Trump's tax plan. No one cares because there's so much damning information that comes out every time we get a new trove of emails. So why did the Clinton campaign then let these identical emails slide? How did they figure nobody would catch on to that? Well, it's, a, it's, it's the old move on. I mean, because move on has worked in the past. But just the like fact you said. that so many people said the same thing, I mean, it's ridiculous. It is so when the FBI yes, yeah. issues, you know, subpoenas or at least uh, when she's indicted, then people are going to say, oh, this is a totally different ballgame. Perhaps this isn't a witch hunt. Perhaps she really has broken the law on several fronts. I'm going to use that next time I get pulled over by a cop. I'm going <laughs> to say, can we move on, please? You're so obsessed with me breaking a law eight minutes ago. <laughs> Many campaign ads are not crazy at all, and so we ignore them, which brings us to a congressional race in North Carolina. Republican Renee Elmers is facing a stiff primary challenge from a former county official, but there's another lesser-known candidate, a former North Carolina GOP spokeswoman named Kay Daly. And judging from Daly's new ad, she ain't playing. This feminist voted to cut veterans' benefits and to gut the military budget. She sponsored a tax increase in the radical ERA and voted to let homosexuals pretend they're married. Mm -hmm. She's a rhino who voted to fund Obamacare and to raise the debt ceiling twice to pay for abortions in D.C. and to fund planned butcherhood. She's pro-amnesty and voted to let convicted illegal alien child molesters stay in America. Yes. And, you know, as a Republican, you can be a rhino, rhino, rhino. I'm Kay Daly, and this is my message. I'm hunting rhinos. Care to join me? <laughs> Day also released a statement warning that Con Congresswoman Elmer's, quote, Hispanders to undocumented immigrants, <laughs> and she pointed out that Elmer supported, quote, Hillary Clinton's feminist museum bill, otherwise known as the National Women's History Museum. Gavin, you started an ad agency. Uh, yeah. Is this a good ad? Yeah. It looked great to me. I don't the know. Everyone target was, audience. Everyone right? was laughing, and I was I was watching it, going, "Yep, <laughs> seems reasonable." <laughs> so that's I mean, is it? It's going to work. You think yeah, it's good? I, you know what the real problem here is? Is pundits and academics and and bloggers and journalists are totally out of touch with America. They see that and they roll their eyes and go, "You had a picture. You called uh, Mexican illegals pedophiles." The rest of us here on Earth go, "Yep." <laughs> well, I do like an ad. Something like, like sorry, something like seventy percent of the girls crossing the border have some form of rape happen to them. This is all real stuff. That's almost as high as most college campuses in this country, <laughs> if you believe the left. Mm. Well, look, oh, I like an ad higher. that ends with a woman shooting a gun, so I thought it did have a good closer. Mind How about you, you have Jody Ernst, Joni yes. Ernst, rather. Yes. And also, there's a Clay Aiken component to the story, which what? makes it near <laughs> yeah. perfect. Absolutely, because I Elmer's uh, beat Clay Aiken um, 2014. His singing couldn't save him. Yeah. Oh, well. Okay. Shooting a gun beats Just singing. ask Ruben Stuttered. So Elmer's a Republican <laughs> beat uh, the uh, singer who was a Democrat, right? Who was formerly Well, didn't Democrat Clay Aiken's Aiken. other opponent Aiken. die? <laughs> yes, <laughs> that was crazy. Under mysterious circumstances. <laughs> okay, well, Lori, yes. you were one of the people Gavin spoke about who was snickering at the <laughs> Did you find it uh, to be crazy? Not again to her target audience, to those ultra-right-wing people, but I think... Um, 
I don't know, she had fantastic hair. And for Which hunting, part was factually incorrect? Well, okay, she's criticizing the opponent for, you know, leaning more central, right? Which happens all the time. I'm not saying she was a total flip-flopper, but she won in the big Tea Party overhaul right in 2010, right? And then she kind of went a little soft and she ticked off her base, the Tea Party base. Yeah. Oh, right. Yes. And so, you know, and so she's entitled to do that. I mean, she's elected and now it's kind of up to her to get reelected. And this woman is a fringe candidate and she's, you know, pulling out all the stops or the guns and, all the <laughs> you know. And Mike, you know. she had footage. Elmer's said she called herself a rhino repeatedly. I think yeah. three times in a row, like didn't that. she? Wow, she <laughs> I like the, yeah. it's the remix. I like the remix yes. and then the shooting of the gun. Anything shooting of a gun, punching oh. a shark, drinking out of a water fountain, it's all insane to me, and yes. I like it. I think she has a shot. I, mean, I just like that we uh, we were introduced to a new amalgamated expression, Hispanders. And if you think I'm not using that at least 15 times this week, yes. you're his crazy. She's Hispandering. <laughs> now, I don't understand this. She's, can you Hispander to non-Hispanics? Sure you can. Yeah, you I'd can. love to try. How do you do it? <laughs> well, go up for margaritas after the show and <laughs> give it a whirl. Hit the Chipotle. <laughs> All right, coming up. Should the drinking age be lowered? I say yes, but only if the eating age is raised. Stay tuned. <laughs> At what age should you be allowed to drink? In my opinion, if you're old enough to head off to war and jump out of a troop transport, you're old enough to down a shot of liquid courage. But to many, 21 is still the way to go. In a new study, Andrew Plunk, assistant professor of pediatrics at Eastern Virginia Medical School, writes that before the 1984 National Minimum Drinking Age Act, how appropriately titled that act was, right? Yeah. That's a beautiful acronym, too. <laughs> States that allowed residents to drink at ages lower than 21 saw higher high school dropout rates in addition to what's already been documented as other effects such as lower educational attainment, higher substance abuse, and more. According to Plunk, we saw a 3% increase in dropout rates in the whole sample. In already at risk groups of dropping out of high school, like blacks and Hispanics, we saw a 4% increase. In today's numbers, with 3.3 million students expected to graduate this year, that means 99,000 more of them would drop out. But correlation does not imply causation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These states had a lower drinking age. They may have had other, dozens of other factors that led to high school dropout rates. Schools may have changed, times may have changed, people may have changed. The real question should be, is it right? Are they adults or not? I say either lower the drinking age or don't let them vote till they're 21. Kennedy isn't dancing the real problem. Absolutely wrong. <laughs> that is exactly right. And you know what dancing leads to? Uh, yeah. Drinking and fornication. That's right. And six babies. <laughs> it's in the documentary Footloose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Which is, uh, it's, it's one of our finest programs. You're absolutely right. The, the documentary was so effective, they, they remade it, as you should do with effective documentaries. Now, I tend to agree with uh, Glenn Reynolds on this. And if you are old enough to, uh, to shoot, then you're old enough to take a shot. And even if this only applies to our men and women in uniform, they certainly uh, should be allowed and able to drink alcohol at 18. You know, you're absolutely right. Otherwise, then if you're going to enlist in the armed forces, you have to raise, raise that age to 21 as well. It's a pretty arbitrary number. Yes, uh, Gavin, obviously they did it because they said, well, look, it's going to save lives. But r lowering the speed limit to 35 across the nation would save lives as well. But we don't do that. Yeah, making everyone in the country brush their teeth at gunpoint would probably make cavities plummet. <laughs> I, I always live in brush a world my teeth like at gunpoint, Gavin. The thing I don't get about these, these surveys is they talk about dropping out like it's a bad thing. Why is education so important? <laughs> I mean, especially now that education means learning about Marx and learning that gender doesn't exist wow. and learning that nothing exists and everything is a lie. What about learning a trade? I think the only people who should be educated are nerds who are genuinely interested in STEM. Everyone else, get the hell out of school, get a nice 
solid trade like welding. Let's have some fun Make again. Make a lot group. more money Education welding than you do as, as a liberal <laughs> arts TA. Exactly. Gavin does make a good point. Mike, remember in high school... I like school, his anti-education stance. Well, you know... <laughs> education, schmeducation. It's, you know, he may have a point, though. Do you remember when people, when the kids who weren't great students, they went to the agricultural school right. or they went to the trade school, Are right? you saying that to me because I look like I should be in a trade school? <laughs> I know it. <laughs> Did you get to keep your tools when you left? <laughs> let's, let's get back to the... I don't think there should... What are the four should... H's? Husbandry? <laughs> preparation? Oh, uh, you lost me right. yeah. on that. I'm not... I, no, he's maybe not I a role. Be in a trade you're school. more of a, uh, you know, a machine repair type, it seems to me. <laughs> I look like a union. Than an agricultural I guy. I look like I should have a union card. But do you think that there should be that three-year period where you're an adult but you still can't drink? No, I think you should be able to drink. I think there should be no age. I think it should be like in Europe. You should be able to eat. Drinking is fun. Is everybody forgetting that? Yes. yes. It's a good time. And then the hangover teaches you to overcome adversity. Right. That, it's so true, because like you got to deal with it on your own. Lori, I don't know. Right. I think you're an idiot when you're 21, so when you're 18, you're even more of an idiot. And I say that collectively. So raise the drinking age to 25. I mean, that's yeah, why well, it's arbitrary, right, right, because right, right. some people no, are able to metabolize or, alcohol right. I don't think you when they're 18. The drinking some age people can't higher. when they're 26. That said, yeah, I do think that if you're car. in the military, yeah, I think you made a great point about then raise the minimum age to join the military. How about this? By the way, everyone's drinking at 15, just for the record. 14, 15, you projectile vomiting for the first two years. All it means is I can't go yeah. to clubs that are strict about ideas. That's it. Yeah. Gavin, they're drinking on the tracks. That's dangerous. Yeah. It's much more dangerous. Let them go into the bars and they can, uh, they'll can. they be safe. And that's they? why hundreds of college presidents have actually uh, encouraged lawmakers, if, if not to lower the drinking age, then at least make it a state-by-state -state case because uh, people who are matriculating on college campuses are drinking as it is. But now they're breaking the law and they're going to run afoul of it and get in all sorts of trouble and cripple their adulthood before it really begins. Don't You're drink and matriculate. my fake ID right? business. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Here's the real thing. If you ever drive out of New York City? Never. No. These bars, they're in the I middle of nowhere. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't tell me suburbs. everyone do who, who doesn't live in New York is drinking and driving. <laughs> oh, my no God. In, I grew up in Quebec in Canada. It's 18 there. And we all went, 18, are you crazy? I'm not waiting another four years. So we would just walk wow. into the forest for an hour and have a bush bash. Yes. And everyone would get blitzed around a bonfire. That's and drinking. And then when no, it was legal at 18, we go, you get a virgin okay. cheerleader pick. Yeah, I was going to say, a bush bash? Oh, there was no fornicating going on. We were way too wasted. No, no, that was, I mean, in, in my high school, everyone went to the woods. There was, right. there yeah. were fires we in the woods. We went to Powers Park, which was on the Willamette River in Portland. And everyone had little red cups, which was awful, and I condemn it. And I don't celebrate that at all. Yeah, I no, refused you remember. to drink that, alcohol. That I did because I actually didn't drink in, and not in high school, and my mom knew it. So I was the designated driver. That's my only holding my friend's hair back, and they were all over the car. Uh, how about all this, right. Gavin? Uh, lower the drinking age just for guys. Yeah, well, <laughs> women don't have the enzymes to break down Talk alcohol. About arbitrary. They I are mean. the Asians of gender, and they don't have what it takes to break down the booze. <laughs> See, I knew it. I knew I'd find a kid's experience in Gavin. Uh, <laughs> coming up, scientists discover water on Mars. Still no sign of intelligent life. But first, the Andy Levy Report with its TV halftime next. Welcome back. Time to find out what we got wrong and what we missed from TV's Andy Levy over in the Red Eye News Deck. Andy. Tom, how are you? Great. Good. I'm feeling good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anti-ISIS artwork dropped from show. Gavin, you said the proper response if something is verboten in Western society is we have to do it. Yes. I agree. I, I'll go further though. I don't understand what's inflammatory about this artwork. All the things it's pointing out that ISIS stands for, ISIS says it stands for. They're not looking, they're looking at this and they're going, uh, it's true, we do do that. And we're, we're afraid of offending ISIS? But this isn't not, even just Muslims or moderate Muslims. That's this what I'm is saying. the worst people in the world who proudly yeah. advertise that and you can't offend them? That's, but you're not even offending them. You're showing what they proudly exactly, do. Exactly, yes. I, I don't get it. Yeah. Um, as the art critic for The Guardian says that the satire is actually not on ISIS, but it's on the West pretending that nothing is happening. Right. So maybe that's, maybe, maybe we're offending ourselves. Mm. Oh, we missed Good. Things. Offend us. We're idiots. Works on a number of levels. Thank it really you for does. That out. Yeah. You, you wouldn't, you know, it's not just kids' art, Lori. Ooh. Is um, that a diss? <laughs> I, that was a I hope the Mets lose. And that guy that wears that chartreuse armband, oh. he's a one hit wonder. What's his name? 
<laughs> Postseason, baby. No, what's 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 his name? It's nobody cares, Lori. Yeah, my point exactly. Uh, Kennedy, you said Not the people enough. who wouldn't let the art be shown aren't winning any friends among ISIS. Mm. Actually, I hate to correct you, ISIS put out a statement saying of the exhibitors who won't show the art, quote, you're all right in our book. Hmm. Yeah, I think um, I think that's right, Andy. Yeah. They're I'm, really I'm proud that of concise. you for doing that, that research because, mm -hmm. you know, we forget how active they are on mm. social media, which Absolutely. means they're probably using Google and Bing to, uh, to find these people. Oh, hold on, nobody's using Bing. <laughs> Google and Bing, wow. <laughs> Actually, the, uh, the operating system in my office, unfortunately, only uh, allows me to use Bing. I once, I once, binged, I once binged Google, Google Crosby by mistake. Oh, that's sweet. Oh, yeah. My uh, Lori, you didn't like that's the artwork, name. and you said you would blow it up yourself, and then you said you would never admit that. You understand you're vaguely on TV, right? Now. <laughs> vaguely. <laughs> Tongue in cheek. Okay. Mm. Uh, Hillary supporters all tweet the same thing. It's weird. People who root for a ro who work for a robot tweeted the exact same thing at the same time. Uh, it's weird. Uh, Gavin, the birther stuff didn't just come out in these emails. It was actually reported back in 2008. The Hillary campaign birther stuff. Oh, really? Yeah, that's not. Well, new. why is it all over the news t today? It's just like sort of be because Trump and Trump kind of said that Hillary was the original birther and she denied it, and ah. then people were saying, "No, here's what happened back then." Mm -hmm. Yeah. I heard his birth certificate uh, looks Photoshop. I'm pretty uh, agnostic about the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Lori, you are absolutely right, though. This is the Clinton mantra every time. The move, you know, move on, nothing to see here, vast right-wing conspiracy, what difference at this point does this make, et cetera. That, this is what they do. This I, is what they do. I agree with you. All the way back to Vince Foster, right? Oh, God rest his soul. Absolutely, <laughs> yeah. Um, Kennedy, you took issue with Hillary's contention that she is the most transparent person that's ever held a government job. I, she might be right, though. Every time she speaks, she is transparently lying. <laughs> she is. In that, in that regard, she is lucite. Yeah. Yeah. The thing about the tweeting that they all tweeted at the same time, in any other field except politics, this would be embarrassing. <laughs> but in politics, it's like they don't, they, they can't be embarrassed. They, they have no shame. Yeah. 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 Well said, Andy. Thank you. Uh, K. Daly's rhino hunting ad. Uh, Kennedy, you said Renee Elmer's beat Clay Aiken in 2014. You seemed unsure about the year. Was it 20? No, you were, you were correct. Oh, yeah. fantastic! Thank you, Andy. Wow, well, that's like that's like winning a brand new car. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> uh, also, according to her website, K. Daly has been endorsed by Dog the Bounty Hunter. Oh, so that's <laughs> and stretch. Beth, or just Dog? Say again. Beth as well. I uh, didn't. It did not mention Beth. Okay. No. Uh, Mike, you said you liked the gun. Yes. I, I mean, powerful. Who, well, who did? Powerful stuff. Yeah. It's interesting, though, because, you know, in the, in the ad, she says she's going rhino hunting and then she fires the shotgun. Right. On her website, though, in a section called What They Say About Renee, her, the person she's challenging, she has a quote from Rich Lowry saying, Renee Elmer's, quote, should be shot, hanged, and wrapped in a carpet and thrown in the Potomac River. Mm. Then there's an asterisk next to it, and it says, The Daily Campaign does not advocate the shooting or hanging of Congress. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Okay, oh, I like that. Those yeah. are bold choices. It's just a little <laughs> weird because then she's going rhino hunting. Uh, does the drinking age affect dropout rates? <clears throat> Tom, you don't like the drinking age being 18 and you cited uh, the National Drinking Age Act of 1984 that gave us that. Yeah. Uh, you understand that law was, that act was signed into law by President Ronald Reagan. Yeah, that's, it is strange. Yeah, so it's, you're not liking it is just more proof that you're a huge rhino. I guess I am. I mean, wow. <laughs> uh, Kennedy, you mentioned the possibility of lowering the drinking age to 18 for people who serve in the military. That's right. That would be a hell of a recruiting tool, wouldn't it? I, I, Andy, you have, you have worn the uniform and served this nation proudly. And uh, if, if you endorse it, then I am proud to be your friend. Yeah. Um, I actually, I'm old enough that I could drink at 18. <laughs> wow. so you could drink an 18 year old yeah. <laughs> in your state in your state right in new york yeah 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 you couldn't in Ma massachusetts was before long before i don't know who the hell goes to massachusetts well just saying the way things were back in my hood <laughs> uh tom you mentioned oh so you couldn't drink at 18 no really yeah did you huh i it, i had occasional beer yeah you're irish yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's part I of actually, your I culture. Think, what, are you, what are you saying? I got uh, grandfathered in is what happened, I think. Because when, <laughs> when, the, when the bill passed, 
I was, I must have been like 18 when the bill passed in 84. And they allowed... But if, but if you were already 18, you, uh, yeah. you could drink. Yeah. Very, yeah, yeah. I, The people watching the show are just loving that information. It's, it is, it's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. They're hammered now. Yes. I don't think you could make it against the law, right, Andy? It's that they, they don't they remove federal funds from the state if they don't? Hi- if, highway funds. Highway funds, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, Tom, you mentioned that the point of lowering the drinking age is to save lives. I, my feeling on that is if it does, I don't care. I don't think you take away rights from adults because some people can't handle those rights. There you go. Amen, Andy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't feel like saying that. I am going to leave now. All right, Andy, All right. thank you. Go Mets. Spider. All right, got to go. Spiders terrorize humans when we return. But first, some chick with her own show. The itsy bitsy spider was nearly the death of us all. Hmm. A man in Detroit was filling up the tank of his car when he noticed a spider by his fuel tank. He did what any of us would do in such a situation, (laughs) tried to light it on fire. That's when this happened. See him there, he sees the spider. He's deciding, oh, he lights it on fire there. Oh, and oh, quickly, (laughs) quickly spreads. (laughs) I would so totally do that too. (laughs) That escalated quickly. The man, whose face is obscured and thus there's no real way to know if it's one of your dumb relatives, (laughs) reportedly apologized to the workers at the gas station. The spider sadly was missing and presumed dead. (laughs) At least until this happened. Okay. Screaming. Wow. Mike, should we judge this guy so harshly? He was afraid of spiders. First of all, this was in Detroit, am I right? Did yes. anybody notice? That's not nice. He apologized. And apparently he wasn't uh, yeah, he, I, from what I understand the insurance covered it. Uh-huh. What kind of insurance does this guy have? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Where can I find this, this is unbelievable <laughs> yes. insurance. I this seen, ironclad. I, don't you want to get that, that policy? I and really do. I haven't oh, yeah. seen that much fun at a gas station since Zoolander. Wouldn't you love to yes. do this to a spider though? It really it's tempting to like show this spider the power of the human being. Yes. As as just a, as a food chain. I thing. think maybe that's what he was <laughs> doing. I mean, you know. He's dumb. I mean, the fact that he didn't understand the correlation between gas and fire, <laughs> yeah. and like he didn't, he didn't go one step further. You know, no, wait a minute, though, gas stations. The thing is, these gas pumps are supposed, supposed to, talk to not on your drip. cell phone That's when true. you're pumping Why gas because a little a bit of static out. electricity <laughs> could That's ignite. True? Yes. But I thought we were I safer now with these all these pumps that are they right. have the safety valves on them. Why was there gasoline all over the ground? Look at that. Because spiders, he's talking man. Off. There's, there's spiders all over the this. Day. They did. They blew it out. But the the pump was ruined. It caused a lot of damage. So he's lucky he didn't blow the whole place up. I thought that's what would naturally happen. Right. It I must guess have just better insulation. No. Happened. No. Was, are you a gas no, station? No. But there was no injuries, and yeah. it wasn't that much damage. And the, the worker hit the, the automatic fuel shut off. So. Look. Yeah. Oh well, that was, was quick thinking. thinking. I know yeah. we all hate white men and the patriarchy, but they have designed some pretty awesome yes, gas stations that can survive some pretty stupid people. I love a, a, a good gas station. Pulling in late at night, pumping my own gas. That's incredible technology. It you was ask, terrible. You don't go to the full serve? I n- full serve, the tyranny of full I serve, can't which they have in Jersey. Gas. Right. Yeah, they, it's the worst. They, they force they, you. They have to do, there's no. Right. Same in Oregon. Mm-hmm. Oregon and New Jersey are the two states where you are not allowed to pump your own gas. You have to beg well, them. May exactly I please why? pump my own gas? I need to be free. <laughs> it is horrible. Oh, you beg them? I uh, do something completely different. <laughs> Gavin, did you know that film, Eight Legged Freaks? Yes. That, because of the mass size of our audience that's more people seeing eight-legged freaks than saw the film thank god it's a classic it's it's a, a spine-tingling classic that gets don't you remember the, like the but don't you remember the, the weekend disaster movies with like tarantula and kingdom of the spiders yeah these like early 80s disaster movies and i would look forward to them all week yeah but there's and then i got a tarantula spiders. for my eighth birthday i honestly don't understand this fear of spiders i get 
a cockroach because it's quick and it can and scurry dirty. up your leg. Uh -huh. yeah. Or I get snakes because you're worried they'll go into your orifice and lay eggs or something. Oh, wow. But a, a spider can bite you. A, a spider can bite. <laughs> Spiders don't. When was the last time you had a spider bite? And even if you do get bit, it's like a mosquito bite. I they just had that woman who jumped out of her car, left her son in the car. The car was totaled. The son almost died trying to jump in the front and figure out how cars work. What? I don't get what's so scary about a spider. I'll eat one right now for two it's bucks. It's true, and you know they what? spin the most beautiful web. Lori, the tragedy yeah. of this guy is yeah. that before, a week before, when this mm -hmm. woman jumped out and almost killed her kid because of the spider, mm -hmm. Gavin and I were like, oh, look at these women. A guy would never do that. Yeah, and then a guy so goes and dies. Like a gas station yeah. that's fire. But I was the first to admit that I would totally do something like that. Not for a spider, but definitely for a cockroach or like a I mean, we bat. did that as, as young people. It's really stupid. But didn't you ever have Aquanet and a lighter? Oh, yeah. those yeah. were the days. It's yeah. like yeah. smash him or crush him with yeah. your foot. But that <laughs> or Aquanet and a lighter. They don't, they don't they have to go. We have to go. We'll close things out with a bedtime story. God, I will never forget the smell. The Aquanet. <laughs>